The division of water has determined the course of human history since early times. In Colorado, Trans Mountain water diversions have been crucial to the evolution of Colorado's social and economic landscape. Colorado is split by the Continental Divide, the spine of the North American continent. The high peaks and ridges of the Rocky Mountains trap weather systems that produce snow and rain. Snow is the foremost contributor to Colorado's water supply, but nature provides it inequitably. About 80% of the state's surface water originates on the western slope, where less than 20% of the state's population lives. The eastern slope receives only 20% of the state's precipitation, but houses more than 80% of the population. Moving water from the western slope to the arid eastern slope is called trans-mountain or trans-basin diversion. Trans-mountain diversions were first constructed in the 1800s, but when Dust Bowl conditions hit in the 1920s and 30s, the quest for large trans-mountain diversions began in earnest, the biggest being the Colorado Big Thompson Project. Today, 12 major trans-mountain diversions, as well as many smaller ones, carry about 25% of Colorado's share of water in the Colorado River system from the west slope to the east slope. This water helps meet the needs of traditional agriculture and rapid urbanization on the Front Range. A trans-mountain diversion takes water from West Slope River systems and carries it to the Front Range. Most trans-mountain diversions require tunnels that are drilled through the Continental Divide. Reservoirs are a major component of trans-mountain diversion, trapping water so it can be channeled into a canal or tunnel and diverted beneath the Continental Divide to the Eastern Slope. One example is the Lost Man Diversion near Aspen, part of the larger Independence Pass Trans Mountain Diversion Project. Where we're standing today is on the headwaters of the Roaring Fork. This is the Lost Man Creek, and behind me is Lost Man Reservoir. It's part of the Independence Pass Trans Mountain Diversion System. We harvest snow melt from the watershed over here off of approximately 45 square miles and take it through a four mile tunnel under the Continental Divide to irrigate um, approximately 50,000 acres primarily in Crowley County, Colorado. The Lost Man Diversion was originally built in the 1930s to irrigate crops. Over time, however, much of this water has been turned over to municipal uses. This reflects a trend along the eastern slope where urban development competes with agriculture for a growing share of the state's water. During a year of abundant precipitation, the amount of water drawn through the Continental Divide in Colorado via all trans-mountain diversions is about 600,000 acre feet. That amount of water would fill the infield at Coors Field with a column of water more than 600 miles high. Trans-basin diversions make up a significant component of existing Front Range water supplies. I think for all the communities up and down the Front Range, be it uh, Colorado Springs or Aurora or Denver, there are increasing populations and there will be a need to find additional supplies. To supply the future use of the Front Range, uh, we continue to have conversations and debates about more trans-mountain diversion west slope water to the front range and, and that's in the Gunnison Basin that's really a heated topic and the big reason that most of the people in in the Gunnison Basin are highly opposed to Trans Mountain diversions out of the Gunnison is they don't want to lose the green belt. A variety of issues occur when you have Trans Mountain diversion. When the when the water goes through the tunnel there's no return flow the lack of the return flow really becomes a big issue for the viability of their stream flows for recreation and tourism and the Gunnison Basin just doesn't want to be there. They just don't want to have anything to do with that. Those of us on the western slope have grown up with the resources and the other side of the mountain has the population. So probably what we will be looking at as time goes on is the eastern slope needing more and more help from the resource that's over here. And I think everybody on the Western Slope feels that same concern. You know, we don't know what they're going to end up needing because we're growing too. 
So you hate to give away much of your future when you don't know for sure what's going to happen. There's the old cliche that water flows toward money and we all know there's a lot more money in, on the front range than there is over here. So we're not going to stop all Trans Mountain diversions or the threat of future Trans Mountain diversions just by having conversations. But I think by working with those East Slope interests, we can try to massage the process into a solution that those diversions will be done in a way that creates the least harm possible to the users in Western Colorado. I think there might be a Trans Mountain diversion in our future. I think that we have to be very, very careful, very, very careful that we do not turn the Colorado Basin into the Arkansas or the Republican or the South Platte. These front range river systems are heavily administered to meet the legal demands of downstream states. The same could occur if new Trans Mountain diversions trigger a compact call on the Colorado River. The West Slope and the Front Range um, need to have an active dialogue about sharing water and in what format could the sharing of water truly work for the basin of origin as well as the receiving basin. It's got to work for both the West Slope and the East Slope if it's going to happen. The water belongs to the state of Colorado and the people of Colorado. So. Uh, and you think of who Denver is. Denver, Denver water is our brothers and sisters and mothers and fathers and aunts and uncles. So, you know, at, sometimes Denver is viewed as the big bad wolf, but, you know, they're just, I don't view them that way. As demands on water increase, many options will be explored before costly and controversial Trans Mountain diversions are built. These include water conservation, new storage systems, and improved irrigation practices throughout the state.